As he turned the corner, Hans Fuchs never saw it coming. Having lived in these mountains for as long as he could remember, he was used to stumbling upon various wildlife, but this was like nothing he had ever seen before. And as he turned to run back to his family in disbelief, it was right then Hans suffered a fatal heart attack. But not without first muttering the details of what he had just witnessed. But before we begin, if you love cryptids and want to learn the full story, both the legends and the facts delivered as a narrative story, then this guided tour is for you. Slither on over and tap the subscribe, like, or review button depending on where you watch or listen. Now, be on guard, watch your step, and whatever you do, don't make any sudden movements. The tour is about to start. I'm Elaine, and you're touring Cryptids Across the Atlas. The Swiss Alps have a lot to offer in the way of natural beauty, spanning across eight countries, including Austria, France, Germany, Italy, Liechtenstein, Monaco, Slovenia, and Switzerland, its breathtaking views are truly a sight to see. Between its 48 mountain peaks, countless lakes, and an extensive list of flora and fauna, there are many sights and wonders to take in. But don't let all this beauty fool you. Although the Alps may be known for its glorious beauty, the Alps might just be hiding a dark secret only few have lived to tell about. According to European folklore, locals long since the 1600s have reported a mysterious yet dangerous beast that is said to lie not far beneath their feet. And depending on what country you're from, the beast in question goes by many a name. Some call it the stole worm, which translates to tunnel worm. Others call it the spring worm, which translates to jumping worm. But most notably known for its Germanic name, the tatzel worm, or worm with claws. Now you may be thinking that something with the word worm in its name isn't typically something you'd shy away from, but if you're familiar with the Olgoi Korkoi, the acid-shooting Mongolian deathworm, then you know what dastardly deeds these types of creatures are capable of. And while the tatzel worm may not be the most popular cryptid to date, that doesn't mean it's not to be feared. While depictions of this beast vary, the general consensus is that the tatzel worm is a thick-bodied lizard with legs and a distinctive face that is quick to turn heads. Some believe this lizard ranges somewhere between two to three foot in length and is covered in dark brown scales with razor sharp teeth. Others have noted the cryptid having rather smooth white skin with large menacing looking eyes and ranging nearly six feet tall. Now, despite the minor differences, this lizard worm type creature seems pretty legitimate except for the one distinctive feature that everyone agrees on, that its head is feline in nature and has a large toothy Cheshire grin that looks as if it's ready to pounce at any moment. Oh yeah, and its apparent ability to hiss like a snake and kill a human with just one dangerously venomous bite. And let's not forget that the tatzel worm is also said to release a poisonous fume as it pounces on its victims and its blood is also made out of literal acid. I feel like I should throw in a joke somewhere about what do you get when you cross the Mongolian death worm and the crowing crested cobra, but apparently all it gets you is a one-way ticket to the afterlife. Okay, so you might be thinking, this tale is outrageously made up. I mean, can you imagine a large worm with a lizard-type body, complete with stubby legs and a large head that resembles a mountain lion? Yeah, me neither. But if you were to ask researchers back in the 1600s, they would tell you that this thing has it out for anyone who dares to step in its path. And there may even be proof the tatzel worm truly existed. In 1680, perhaps the first written account of this local Swiss legend was introduced. Johann Jacob Wagner, a Swiss doctor and naturalist, published Historia Naturalis Helvetiae Curiosa, which, side note to me, this sounds like an epic Harry Potter spell. This documentation provides a detailed list of the natural history of Switzerland. Divided into seven sections, Johann begins with a general description of this beautiful country, following the description of the Alps in regards to their shape and height. Johann also covers the glaciers, lakes, rivers, baths, and mineral springs, and continues on to describe the animals and plants as well as organic and inorganic fossils and minerals. To finish off, he also shares a detailed list of meteorology. One interesting thing to note about this documentation 
is at the time, Johann also provided the first written description about the Switzerland caves, which just so happens to be where the tassel worm, the native cave dweller, resides. With this original illustration of the tassel worm, numerous sightings followed. In 1779, it said that Hans Fuchs, a Swiss farmer who was walking through the mountains one day when he encountered not one, but two tassel worms. Horrified at what he had witnessed, Hans tried turning back to run and tell his family to stay far away from the mountaintops. But in his attempt, Hans unfortunately suffered a fatal heart attack. Though we're not entirely sure if the heart attack was directly caused by the tassel worms spewing their venom, or if Hans was just so worked up that his body simply couldn't handle the mental shock. Regardless, with this final breath, Hans described the creature as being seven feet in length, with a snake-like body, clawed front legs, and a large feline-like head with sharp teeth. In 1828, another story describes a man who supposedly found the corpse of a tattoo worm lying just a few feet ahead. It said that he picked up the corpse and carried it all the way home to show off his fascinating find. However, upon arrival, crows had already eaten so much of the carcass on the way home that there was no real identification left. A few years later, more tattoo worm illustrations began servicing historical literature. After the Bavarian hunting manual was released titled, New Pocket Guild of the Year 1836 for Nature and Hunting Enthusiasts, images were depicted of this worm cat-like beast. Later, in the 1900s, Bernard Heuvelman, a cryptozoologist we've mentioned previously on the show, described the drawing as being a sort of scaly cigar with formidable teeth and wretched little stumps of feet. And again in 1841, other illustrations appeared in the Swiss Almanac, Alpenrosen, that resembled a long, scaly creature with two tiny front legs. While we don't have a specific date for this next tale, there's also the story of a man who is gathering herbs along the mountainside with his son. After his son had just gotten a little too far out of sight, he heard him let out a terrible scream. Running after him, the father stood there in paralyzed fear at the creature hiding beneath a large rock, in which he described it as being a gruesome monster. According to the story, the monster hissed like a snake and had the face of a cat with big, bright eyes. Luckily, the man was able to save his son by stabbing the tattle worm with a sharp stick. However, once he pierced its flesh, the monster sprayed out green blood that burned the man's leg so badly that it caused a terrible limp, and it was all that the man could do to hobble back home with the aid of his son. If you ask me, this particular story sounds a lot like the Jiangsan bomb from Busan we shared a few months back, with both stories involving a man and his son out for a walk in the woods, only to have the young boy calling out in distress due to a stalking beast. Or even the legend of the missing boy and the Mongolian death worm, where it said that the creature spewed acidic venom when approached. And with the growing popularity of these stories, the legend of the tatsu worm only continued to grow along with them. And so did the hoaxes. On more than one occasion, people throughout Europe have supposedly found remains of these creatures, only to be heavily exaggerated or doctored up. Like in the early 1900s, when a tassel worm skeleton was mysteriously donated to the Geneva Institute of Science. After an unnamed individual took a photograph of the supposed skeleton, the picture showed a long snake-like creature with two clawed arms and a larger than normal head. However, due to the mysterious circumstances, we're not entirely sure the skeleton was one of the tassel worm, or that if there was even a skeleton donated at all, as no one ever claimed to have donated it in the first place. Or around the same time when Balkan, a Swiss photographer, claimed to have photographed the tassel worm near Meringen, Switzerland. The photo in question received much hype and interest that a Germanic magazine, the Berliner Illustrator, sponsored a winter expedition in search of this creature. However, the trip was lackluster as there was no such evidence of this creature's existence. And given the skepticism, people eventually chalked up Balkan's original photograph as nothing more than a prank with many believing that the photo was just a hilariously staged ceramic fish. There's also another supposed photograph that was taken in the 1960s. But after this photo was mysteriously gifted to a Geneva newspaper, researchers and cryptozoologists alike agreed that this photo was nothing more than a ploy by the Bavarian mayor trying to attract tourists. 
which is very reminiscent of our Beast of Bladenboro story we covered where even though the mayor was skeptical of the beast itself, he was quoted by saying, a little publicity never hurt a small town. Again, in the 90s, there was the case of two naturalists who swore that they found the skeleton of a lizard-like animal that resembled a tattle worm near Domodossola, Italy. One of the men, Giuseppe Costal, claimed that he witnessed a gray-crested reptile moving about in a zigzag fashion in the same area two years apart, once in October of 1991 and again in September 1992. But if you ask me, this sounds more like the depiction of the crowing crested cobra found in Africa and less like a Germanic worm cat. Even hoaxes as recent as 2009 have claimed to see the tatzel worm in broad daylight. Near the Swiss border in Trecivio, Italy, on several occasions, many Italian locals claim that they saw the tatzel worm. They considered these creatures to be raptor dinosaurs. However, it was later speculated by authorities that these were no tatzel worms and that what the people were seeing were only missing monitor lizards that had escaped their masters. In comparing a picture of a monitor lizard and the illustrations of the tatzel worm, I'm not sure where they were getting the similarities, but what do I know? I do find it deeply fascinating that when humans get an idea in their head, they run with it, likening every mishap, misfortune, or strange phenomena to be explained by their very assumptions. Sometimes we'll see a weird light in the sky and automatically jump to the conclusion that UFOs are trying to take over, with the very likelihood of the strange light just being a reflection off of a building or simply lights off in the distance from an airplane. Or, if a light randomly flickers late at night, we think our house is automatically haunted when really it's probably something simple as a light bulb going out or some type of electrical issue. But when we wholeheartedly believe in an idea, no matter how outrageous it may seem, no matter if there's a million other more logical explanations, it's our story and we're sticking with it. And while many believe that the tattle worm truly exists, with its acidic fumes and venomous bites, there may be a more logical explanation. And not just that it's a hoax, but that strange worms or lizards are more common than we might think. Well, minus the cat head and strange feline-like behavior. In fact, many people think that the tattle worm is actually just a rare salamander that resembles the venomous Gila monster that calls a Sonoran desert its home. The reason why so many people spectate the very real Gila monster is because the supposed venomous fumes the tassel worm releases, the Gila monster is also considered to be an extremely venomous lizard. Others speculate that the tassel worm could also just be a giant skink. However, neither the Gila worm nor skinks are particularly native to the Swiss Alps. While there are several supposed sightings and stories passed down throughout centuries, the truth is we still don't have physical proof that the tassel worm actually exists. But that doesn't stop the continuous stories of local legends. While the tattle worm may not be as popular as most famously known cryptids like the Sasquatch or Nessie, the tattle worm has still been recognized in pop culture references. Take the hit Cartoon Network series The Secret Saturdays, for instance. If you're not familiar, the premise of the show follows the adventures of the Saturdays, a family of cryptozoologists that work to keep the truth about cryptids from getting out to protect both the human race and the creatures themselves. The tattle worm was first introduced in season two, episode six, titled The Return of the Soul Kalu, where it can be seen caged up and even makes another appearance in The Beast of the Fifth Sun, a Secret Saturday spin-off video game. And then there's also German literature, where the tattle worms are portrayed as European dragons, in which the poem Der Tassel Worm, written by Joseph Victor von Scheffel, follows the perspective of the tattle worm recounting its days, terrorizing the mountainside, and laments that humans are no longer afraid of it. There's also a play titled Der Tattle Worm that depicts the dragon as a small serpent with claws that can grant wishes. Oh yeah, and in the game Dungeons and Dragons, the tattle worm is known to have multi-attacks such as bite, burning blood, and poisonous breath that releases a poisonous gas where the players take 21 poison damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. Despite the lack of evidence and physical proof that the tassel worm ever existed, it seems that even the most bizarre creatures of our world have a cult following. If you love cryptids and want to learn even more about the creatures we just talked about, 
Find us on TikTok or Instagram. Just search username at The Cryptid Atlas. By the way, the episode you just witnessed is both a podcast and YouTube video. So whichever format you prefer, we have you covered. Also, check out our interactive cryptid map to browse the globe and learn about cryptids from your favorite areas. Every episode we make adds another pin to our map. You can find our social channels, the map, and more at thecryptidatlas.com. And when you find us, be sure to tap that follow button and get in on the action by dropping a comment on our recent videos. If you enjoy the show, consider sharing it on with a friend. Sharing the spooky love with someone else is the best compliment you could ever give us. And if you listen on Apple or Spotify, consider leaving an honest review to help other listeners know what to expect. Thanks for touring cryptids across the Atlas. Until next time, keep your eyes open. You never know what you might see just on the edge of the road.